hello so mate you're highly welcome back again to this youtube channel and if this is your first time here you're highly highly welcome please do well to hit the subscribe button and also click on the notification bell so you'll be notified whenever i drop a new video in this video we'll be drafting a corset using the dartless corset method yes if you're someone who is very much not into this or that manipulations when it comes to drafting a corset then this video is for you and also dartless corset makes it easier to you know easily draft out a corset pattern now in this video we'll be making use of the bra cup in another video i'll do a detailed tutorial on how to draft a Dartless corsets with touches in the back cup. So if you're interested in this, do well and keep watching and also do not touch the dial. So these are the items used during the course of this tutorial: the skin nets, the crepe material, and the Ankara fabric, the boning, plastic boning, and also the bra cup. Um, I also made use of the ST. This is also very important. So right now I have my pattern paper, my curve roll, my tape roll and my pen for drafting this out. So if you don't have a pattern paper, you can make use of a cardboard paper. So the very first step is to come down by one inch from the beginning of your paper. If you've watched several of my videos, especially my previous videos, you should know why I do come down from the beginning of the paper by one inch. It is just to, you know, get a starting line. So this line is referred to as the starting line or the top line. So after doing this, I'll go ahead and on this line, I'll divide the shoulder measurement by two. So the shoulder measurement I'm working with is 14 inches. 14 divided by two gives me seven, which I'll go ahead and mark out here. Now, after marking out the shoulder, next is to mark out the arm or depth. Now, to get the arm or depth for the individual you're working with, divide the round bust measurement for that individual by 6 plus 1.5. So, for this, after dividing the round bust measurement by 6 plus 1.5, I have 7.3, which I have marked out. So, on this point, I'll go ahead and mark out the shoulder measurement just to make sure I get a straight line by connecting the arm or depth to the shoulder like this now after doing this the next step is to mark out the neckline and for this corset i want the normal regular round neckline so to get the round neckline for this individual i'll just go ahead and divide the bust measurement by 12 and whatever i get i mark it out so the bust measurement divided by 12 for this individual is 2.8 which i marked out here for the neck width and for the neck depth i also mark out 2.8 inches like this now i'll go ahead and connect the neck width to the neck depth to form the round neckline for this individual now after doing this the next step is to come down by one inch from the shoulder just to have that shoulder slant or slope you know shoulders are not straight it's quite slanted so i'll connect this one inch that i came down with to the neck width to form to get the shoulder slant or form the shoulder slant after doing this the next step is to get the midpoint between these two points so i'll go ahead and bring in my tape and place it like this and then bend it over like this and then press this edge here just to get the midpoint and here's the midpoint and then from the midpoint i'll go in by 0 0.75 inch next i'll divide the round bust measurement by four and whatever I get, I'll mark it out. So the round bus measurement I'm working with divided by 4 gives me 8.5, which I've marked out here. And I'll bring in my rule to connect a straight line like this. So now that I have the straight line, I'll connect these two points together to get the arm o curve. So I'll go ahead and connect the three points together like this to get the arm o curve so if you don't have your curve rule to do this you can actually use your hands to just draw it out just make sure you get a perfect curve now the next step is to start marking out all the important lines so firstly i'll go ahead and mark out the underbust line so after measuring from the shoulder to the underbust go ahead and mark it out so for this individual i am working with 12.5 inches which i have marked out and i'll go ahead and connect these dots to get a straight line like this So this line is the underbust line. 
next is to mark out the bust point now the bust point also refers to us from the shoulder to the nipple measurement that is you place your tape from the shoulder to the nipple to get the bust point so for this pattern i'm working with nine inches for the bust point measurement so that's what i'm marking out you can see how the tape is being placed so after marking it out i'll also bring in my ruler to connect these dots to get a straight line like this and this line is the bust point line that's bp <laughs> next i'll go ahead and mark out the waistline measurement now because i'm not making use of any darts for this pattern there is no need for the back length and the front length rather just go ahead and use the front length as your waistline measurement so for this i'm making use of 15 inches as the waistline measurement or the half cut measurement whichever you want to refer to is that refer to it as so i'll go ahead and bring in my rule and connect the dots to get a straight line like this as well and this line is referred to the waistline or half cut after doing this the next step you would want to do is to mark out the hip depth or hip line so from your waistline mark out the hip depth so for me i'm making use of eight inches as the hip depth and that is what i am marking out and after doing that i went ahead to bring in my rule to connect the dots to get a straight line so sorry you could not see this part but later on i adjusted the camera so you could see all of it so because this is a corset and i'm making use of a bonnet for this corset i don't want a scenario whereby the person is putting on this corset and when they're sitting down the corset start poking them or making them uncomfortable so to avoid all of that um, scenario i am going to determine where this corset um, is going to stop so the perfect place for a corset to stop is six inches or five inches or 5.5 inches below your waistline so for this pattern i have come down from the waistline by 5.5 inches which of course i have connected to get a straight line and this is where the corset is going to stop this is the length of the corset right now it's time to divide the round body measurement by four and mark it out now on the underboss line divide your round underboss measurement by four and mark it out so i just did that as for the waistline there has to be some form of snatching on the waistline because that is the major attribute of a corset and since there is no doubt to achieve that for us then we have to do the snatching ourselves by simply snatching from the round waist measurement after dividing it by four so if you remove 0.25 from the waist uh, measurement after dividing it by four then you have snatched the waist by one inch if you remove 0.5 then you have taken two inches from your actual waist measurement if you remove 0.75 then you have removed three inches from your waist measurement and if you remove one inch then you have taken out four inches from your actual waist measurement i hope you do understand so for this corset i want to make use of a zip and because of that i will only be removing one inch from the actual waist measurement so since the waist measurement I'm working with is 28 inches, 28 divided by 4 gives me 7 inches. So 7 minus 0 0.25 gives me 6.75. So I will mark out 6.75 here on the waistline. So with this little subtraction, I just removed 1 inch from the actual waist measurement. So I'll go ahead and connect the bust measurement to the waist measurement by using my row and placing it like this to connect it so that i'll have that nice curve and then on the hip line i'll divide the hip measurements by four and mark it out so the hip measurement i'm working with is 37 divided by four gives me 9.25 which i've marked out here and i'll connect the waist measurement to the hip measurement by placing my curve rule like this and then connecting so i'll place it properly and then connect like this to have that nice curve so here at this point i'm just going to blend it because i don't want it sharp just blend so now that i have this the next step is i think the important step as well i will go ahead and bring in the bra cup so for the bra cup i'm making use of size 34 since the round bust measurement is 34. so you can actually place your bra cup depending on the style you want to achieve 
now let's say you come down from your bust point by one inch this is how your bra cup is going to be placed or let's say you come down from the bust point by 1.5 inch this is how the bra cup is going to be seated it's going to be placed so you can see your bra cup is now becoming slanted and this way the cleavage depth is going to be deeper meaning maybe there might be some little revealing of the bust and all of that so it depends on the way you want the bra cup seated on the dress or the corset you're making and from whatever point you want the bra cup seated you have to go in by half an inch from the center front so for me i just want the bra cup to be set straight i'll just go in by half an inch from the bust point like this half an inch that is 0 0.5 inch and from that half an inch that is where the bra cup is going to be placed so if your bra cup is going to sit slanted uh, from that slanted position you're going by half an inch from the center front and place it from the half an inch and then you go ahead and trace out the bra cup like this make sure underneath the bra cup is seated on the under bust line while finding out the position you want so it should be seated on the under bust line just the way this bra cup is seated on the under bust line so whether you want the bra cup slanted or not make sure it is seated on the under bust line properly and it is coming half an inch in from the center front and then go ahead and trace it out I hope you understand so for me i just want the bra cup seated straight and i've gone ahead to trace it out so this is what i traced out next within the traced out bra cup going by half an inch around the cup like this so this is the sewing allowance for the cup and it is very necessary and important so going by half an inch like this so i'll just do that all round so this is very very important like i stated earlier on and please if you're using the dartless method to draft out um, a corset for a bigger bust size please do not use the bra cup to draft out the cuff rather draft out the cup from scratch i hope you do understand draft it out from scratch rather do not use the bra cup at all because i feel um you won't have total control of how much revealing is going to happen around the bust and i do not advise it at all because it is risky i only advise using the bra cup to you know draft at the um, cup section only when it has to do with the smaller bust size so from bust 36 make sure you draft out the um, cup from scratch so i think i'll make a video a very detailed video on how to draft out the cup from scratch if you're using the dartless um if you're using the dartless method to draft out a corset so i'll do another video i'll do another video on that yeah but for a smaller bust it's okay to use the bra cup to you know draft out the cup section so right now i'll go ahead and come up by 1.5 inch from the corset length line because i want this corset to have a curved um shape yeah and i'll bring this back to i'll curve this um, 1.5 back bring it back to the corset line to form that nice curved shape so right now I'll go ahead and use my scissors to cut this up so if there's any part you do not understand that is quite confusing to you just drop your question in the comment section and I'll try as much as possible to respond to your question. So right now you can see the way it is. I have cut it out and you can see what I have. So this is how it's going to be. <laughs> going to be, be, be. <laughs> so um, right now this is the front yoke. I just have to indicate this is the front yoke. And on this point, I'll be adding half an inch here, half an inch on the arm or half an inch on the shoulder. And for the neckline, I'm not putting any allowance. As for the hem, I can make use of half an inch or one inch for the hem, depending on how the spirit leads. <laughs> and for the side seam allowance, you can make use of 1.5 inch, 1 inch, 2 inches, 3 inches. It depends on you, but just take note of how many inches you want for the side seam allowance. And also for those points here, you'll be using half an inch allowance when cutting on the fabric. Now it's time to draft out the back pattern. And as usual, come down from the beginning of your paper by one inch, baby. <laughs>
so come down from the beginning of your paper by one inch like this so when you're putting allowances i advise you write the allowance on your pattern paper so when you're sewing because this brain can be very funny at times you might just forget or you might start you know questioning yourself was it one inch i left for the side seam was it two inch was it three inch? so just write whatever inch you're leaving for the side seam on your pattern paper on the side you are leaving them so that way whenever you forget or get confused you just go ahead go back to your pattern paper and see how many sewing inches sewing allowance you're leaving so right now i have marked out the shoulder and i've marked out the arm o depth and i'll go ahead and bring in my rule to connect this point so before then i think um the line is not straight so i'm marking out the shoulder measurement here to make sure i get a straight line so I'm marking it here on this arm O point and you can see I've arrived at a straight line. <laughs> so right now for the neckline, for the neck width for the front, you know, I made use of 2.8 inches. So I also go ahead and mark out 2.8 inches for this neck width. And for the neck depth, one inch, which I've, like I've always stated, is the standard neck depth for the back pattern. So I'll go ahead and bring in my rule and connect the neck width to the neck depth to get this nice curve. And after doing this, I'll go ahead and come down by one inch from the shoulder to get that shoulder slant or slope and i'll connect this one inch back to the neck width like this and after doing this i'll go ahead and divide the run bust measurement by four and mark it out here so i'll divide the run bust measurement by four and go ahead and mark it out so i'll mark it out here like this and I'll bring in my rule to rule this down to get a straight line like so. And this line is referred to as the chest line. Now, after doing this, I'll get the midpoints between these two points by either dividing whatever I get here by two or I bend over my tape like this to get the midpoints and mark it out here. And from the midpoints, I'll come in by half an inch, which is um, 0 0.5 inch and I'll connect these three points to get the arm o curve for the back pattern so I'll go ahead and place my curve rule like this so like I earlier stated if you do not have a curve rule you can use your hand to com um, connect the three points together just make sure you get a perfect curve so right now the um, arm o curve for the back pattern is ready so the next step is to mark out the waistline and as like i earlier stated there is no need for back waistline front waistline and all of that at all because we are not using that for this corset so i'm making use of 15 inches for the waistline or half cut which i also made use for the waistline for the front yeah so 15 inches is the actual front um waistline and that is what i'm using for this back pattern as well because i'm not using any that i'm not putting any that i hope you do understand so i've connected this to get a straight line as you can see so this ink is about to finish the pen seems like the ink is about to finish so i'm just double tracing it you know i'm just lazy to change the pen but i'll eventually get to do that so this is the waistline and next, I'll mark out the hip depth or hip line from the waist line like this. So I'm making use of 8 inches for the hip depth. So I'm marking 8 inches from the waist line to get the hip depth or hip line. And I'll go ahead and bring in my rule to connect this to get a straight line like so. So bear with me oh, <laughs> that I'm double tracing to, you know, just to make sure this is, the line is obvious. And this is the hip line or hip depth, whichever you want to refer to it as. And next you mark out the length of the corset. So remember I made use of 5.5 inches for um, the corset on the front pattern, for the corset length on the front pattern. So I'm repeating the same thing on the back pattern like this, 5.5. So like I earlier stated, you can make use of 5, 5.5 or 6 inches from the waistline. Yeah, that is where the corset is going to stop. Yeah, just like we have blouse length, we also have corset length. This is because you want the corset to be comfortable 
on your client or on you when you're putting it on and you're seated you don't want the bony to be choking your laps to be poking your laps ah, ah. <laughs> what am i doing so this is the corset lens <laughs> And since I'm making use of a zip for this corset, then back tightening is a must. So from the waistline, I'll go in by 0.75 inch and I'll connect this to the neckline and to the hip line like this. So I'll connect this to the neck depth like so. And I'll also connect this to the hip line like this so after doing this back tightening which of course um, um, helps in avoiding the bulging of the zip so after doing this the next step is to go ahead and mark out the waist measurement so exactly what i marked out on the front waist measurement that's what i'll mark out here so since i marked out 6.75 for the front that's what i also marked out here since 0.75 starting from this um um back tightening line yeah that's the new center back and i'll go ahead and connect the bust measurement to this waist measurement yeah like this to get a nice curve so you place your um rule like this to get a nice curve and on the hip line you also go ahead and divide your round hip measurement by four and mark it out so i'm making use of 37 inches for the hip 37 divided by four gives me 9.25 which i've marked out and i'll use my rule to connect this to the waist like this so i'll place my rule like this to get that nice beautiful curve And this is it guys I'll just go ahead and blend this in because I don't want this part looking pointed so right now to get that curved at the hem I'll go ahead and come up by 1.5 inch from the corset length line like this on the side and I'll connect this 1.5 inch back to the corset length line using the curve rule of course so go ahead and place it nicely and connect to get that nice curve so now that that is done the next step is to go ahead and determine if you want the yoke at the back to be slanted or straight like this so for me i want to have that slanted look at the back yes between the ankara and the net i want that slanted demarcation so for that reason i'll be coming down by one inch on the side here from the chest line and i'll go ahead and measure from the shoulder to this one inch i came down with and i have eight inches and then when marking out on the center back i'll be adding one inch to this eight inches and i'll mark it out like this so i'll go ahead and mark out the nine inches and i'll bring in my um, rule to connect these two new points together to get that slanted look here so i'll go ahead and do that like this so there's also another easy way out yeah so after coming down by one inch from the side um after coming down by one inch at the side from the chest line all you have to do is to add one more inch to the one inch and you have two inches at the center back yeah you can increase it to three inches or four inches depending on how slanted you want it to be but for this i'm okay with this so for me this is how i just want the back yoke to be but you can decide if you want it to have a different shape if you want the back yoke to have a different shape you can curve it like this to have any shape you want for the back yoke it all depends on what look you're going for for the back yoke but for me i'm not going for any of this look so that's why i'm not that bothered much so you can just curve it like this and you know you have this beautiful look for your back yoke yeah so it all depends on what you want baby <laughs> but for me i'm not going for any of that look yeah i'm not going for any of that look i'm just going for a normal basic look mm -hmm. so i'll just go ahead and cut this out like this i'm cutting out the back tightening i'll go ahead and cut this out cut it out cut it out cut it out cut it out so right now if you want um lacing for the back because obviously if you're doing an heavy tightening 
you need your lacing you can go in by one inch yeah depending on how much space you want for the um lacing you can just go in by one inch from your center back like this yeah and then you cut out the one inch so that is just it yeah so you cut out this part yeah so that is just it some people even going by two inches but i think that's too much space at the back for the lacing since you've already done your waist snatching then there's no need for all that revealing at the back or too much space at the back one inch is okay but it depends on what you want to do decide for yourself or for the style you're creating yeah it depends on you everything can be creative so you go ahead and demarcate this slanted line and here we have it yeah <laughs> So right now, there is this little trick that I normally do, yes, when it comes to if I'm using a net or whenever I'm using a net, a skin net for that matter, I'll go ahead and put the shoulders together and close it up. So um, I had to go bring in my paper tape because it's important at this moment. So just make, take note that you'll be adding half an inch here, half an inch here and one inch at the center back for the zipper allowance and 1.5 inch for the side and half or one inch at the end and for the arm or half an inch for the shoulder half an inch if you're cutting the yolks separately um that is if it's a net but if you're putting the yolks together at the shoulder there is no need of leaving half an inch on the shoulder yeah so i'll go ahead and bring in my tape paper tape so you can see the arm holes are on the same part here so i will place the shoulders nicely together like this and bring in the paper tape to you know seal them together seal them together baby <laughs> sorry so after um doing this after doing this i'll go ahead and you know leave half an inch here half an inch here half an inch here and half an inch at the center back of the yoke not one inch because i'm not adding zip i'm only sewing in buttons and you know buttons hook or hose so i'll go ahead and bring in the um tool or skin net and fold it over like this into two so go ahead and do that and i'll bring in the yoke and place it like this so when placing the yoke make sure the center front of the front yoke is on the folded part and go ahead and use your pin to pin it together so make sure it's on the folded part because the um, center front is on fold it is not open so right now i've gone ahead to cut it out and you can see the center front is on fold and i have left half an inch here half an inch here 1.5 inch here half an inch here and half an inch at the center back of the yoke so this is it guys so i have to cut out two of the skin nets one as the main um, fabric and the other as the lining so i'll also bring in the other patterns so i brought in the back pattern and the front pattern and i'll be using this to cut out the ankara and also cut out the um what's it called the crepe material yes so um for the back pattern for the front pattern i'm making use of crepe material for the front um corset and for the back i'm making use of ankara for this part so i'll go ahead and cut them out with the necessary allowance so guys this is it as you can see so for the front you can see i made use of crepe and i cut out both the main fabric and the lining uh, so i cut out two of this one as the main fabric and one as the lining and you can see the allowances left and for the back i also went ahead to cut out the ankara and also make use of the black lining and don't forget to notch the zipper section where the um, zipper allowance starts from so you note where your zipper is so you can see the lining i also cut out and the allowances as well and for the tool or skin net i've cut out two out of it and you can see the allowances are also left as well so right now i will go ahead and you know open this up so before then you can just if you want to put in your bony sewing your bony channels you can sew in your bony channels like this more of like it can be straight like this on the back pattern your bony channel can be placed like this and for the front pattern you can decide however you want your bony channels to be that is one beautiful thing for uh, with that less corset so your bony channels can be bent like this 
so however you want it however design you want to create with your bunny channels you are free to do so yeah baby so you can just decide like this or whichever um style lines you want for your bunny bunny channels for your bunny <laughs> so right now go ahead and iron in the um st to the crepe material the, the lining and the main fabric and also the ankara and the lining and for the tool or nets i'll go ahead and remove the paint and just make sure you notch the side just create a little sink or notch to save us okay this is where the shoulder is all in hand to alert you so at this point um i created another video for the sewing or put or putting together of this old corset um base yes because this video was getting too long and i just had to cut it short for proper understanding so this is how the back is after i was done sewing so if you want to watch the sewing video i'll be dropping the video by tomorrow or later this um later today um, so this is what I made with this corset, that lace corset that was drafted out. I made a full gown and this is the gown. So I will drop the link to the sewing video once it's uploaded. So see you in the next video. Love you. Bye.